There are so many different ways to spend your time in Disney World depending on what your priorities are. Rides make up a huge part of the Disney experience, but how much time do you really want them to take up during your trip? Are the longest wait times really worth it? This tough decision is what we're breaking down today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Among the many decisions you've got to make during your trip, deciding which rides are worth your time and maybe even your money can be a big part of it. Disney World has so much to offer and you might find yourself struggling to figure out how much time to dedicate to all the different options there are out there. A lot of personal preference goes into this decision, but today we're going to break down the pros and cons of toughing out Disney World's longest wait times. Want to get a copy of this list and the info I'm about to share with you so you can keep it handy while you're planning your trip? Don't take notes, just head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash worth it waits and we'll send it all straight to your inbox. So let's start with figuring out which rides those are. In each of Disney World's four parks, there are a few rides that consistently have significantly long wait times, even when the parks are at their least crowded. Over in Magic Kingdom, you can pretty much count on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Splash Mountain, Peter Pan's Flight, and Jungle Cruise, especially when it has its special Christmas Jingle Cruise layover, having average wait times at around an hour or more. Except maybe in the winter when Splash Mountain gets a little bit of a shorter wait time because nobody wants to get wet and cold. In Epcot, the rides you're going to find yourself waiting the longest for are Frozen Ever After and Test Track. It's pretty expected to see these attractions with wait times longer than an hour at all times. In Disney's Animal Kingdom, Pandora, the world of Avatar boasts the longest wait times in the park, with Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey topping out with averages around one and a half hours or more. Even with other popular rides throughout the park, like Expedition Everest and Kilimanjaro Safaris, those rides in Pandora are the ones you can and should expect to wait the longest for. Hollywood Studios is probably the park where you're going to find the most rides with seriously long wait times. Among those are Tower of Terror, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's run, with average wait times commonly lingering around an hour or longer. And I know you're saying, AJ, what about Rise of the Resistance? Well, hang on. With even greater wait times, you're going to find Slinky Dog Dash and Rise. Remember, Rise of the Resistance is no longer using a virtual queue at this time, and we've seen it with wait times over two hours since implementing the standby line. All these rides have really long wait times for a reason. They're some of Walt Disney World's best and most beloved, but are they really worth it? You only have so much time during your Disney trip and everyone in your group has different priorities. So how do you decide how long to stick out those lines for? And how do you maybe avoid those long wait times? Yeah, we're going to get to that too. Don't worry. So let's consider a couple of things here. What do you consider to be too long? One of the big factors in is it worth it to wait in line is your personal preference of what you deem just way too long to stand in line. We previously asked our readers what they consider to be too long when it comes to waiting in line for rides at Disney World. And lots of folks said one hour was their max, while others topped out at 45 and 30 minutes before deciding to pass on that long wait. When trying to figure out if an especially long wait time is worth it for you and your family, well, that all depends on what the specific interests, priorities, and and favorites are among your group. A little piece of knowledge to remember when you're considering whether or not to get in that long line is that the posted wait times are often longer than what the actual wait time may be. So if you see a wait time that seems really long, you might not necessarily want to let that deter you because you might end up waiting a few minutes less than anticipated. Of course, this isn't always the case. You can't rely on that but it's important to keep it in mind nonetheless. Also, think about what the setting of the line is. If you're visiting Disney during especially hot times or out of nowhere torrential downpour season, then maybe that hour long line outside is not the right call. Take a minute to think about all the factors that come into play while waiting in line before making that decision. Okay, now it comes as no surprise that if you choose to wait in multiple hour long lines, well, you're gonna experience significantly fewer rides as you would if you chose not to wait or used alternatives to minimize your wait time. Don't worry, we're getting to that. Spending one hour or more in line for one ride can be equivalent to riding two or maybe even three less popular rides. Of course, if some of your priorities lay outside the realm of just rides, we can also compare it to an hour missed out on enjoying a meal at a table service restaurant, kicking back at the pool, or catching the latest character cavalcade. You know, if you're a person of multiple interests and not just a ride fanatic. So time is money in Disney World. So how much would you pay to save time? So here's the tricky question. Would you want to pay to spend less time in line? Recently, Disney World introduced Disney Genie, a new planning service to help guests customize their park experiences. Under this Genie umbrella is Disney Genie Plus, which is a paid option. 
used to help minimize wait times and let guests skip the lines. Genie Plus has replaced Disney World's previous FastPass system that was used to help guests skip those lines, and that happened to be free. With Genie Plus, you can book one attraction at a time to get access to Lightning Lanes, which allow you to skip the ride standby line for $15 per person per day. While many rides are included in Genie Plus Lightning Lane selection, there are some high-demand rides that are only available for booking through what they call individual attraction selections. These are the most popular rides and they cost extra. Of these included rides, guests can purchase up to two individually priced rides per day with prices depending on the ride you choose and the time of your visit. So yeah, there is surge pricing there. When it comes to Disney Genie Plus, there's undeniably a lot to digest. I definitely recommend checking out some of our other videos, breaking down all the need to know details. We've got several of them on Disney Genie Plus already. So how do these lightning lanes compare to the standby lines? Well, our team of reporters is in the Disney World parks every day and they've tried out all sorts of different ways of using Genie Plus, whether that's testing out if using lightning lanes will actually help you save time, what it's like to let Genie decide your day, and truly everything in between. In one experiment, our reporters tested the difference between using lightning lanes through Genie Plus to skip the standby lines versus actually waiting in the standby lines. In this instance, the reporter waiting in the regular lines was actually the one to get through all of the rides first. Now, you're probably thinking, AJ, why would I pay more money in Disney World and finish riding rides later than the person that isn't paying more? Well, the answer there is to not take everything at face value. Yes, our reporter without Genie Plus did make it through the rides first, but she spent all of her day waiting in line, whereas the reporter using Genie Plus Plus, had a lot more downtime during her day to relax, get snacks, and enjoy her time in the parks, since there was more time between her lightning lane selections. So if your family is the type to go, 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 then maybe you won't mind spending your day hopping from ride to ride with vigor and waiting in line. Alternatively, if you prefer to take it slow and have a lot of downtime throughout your day, then Genie Plus might be the best way to do that while still prioritizing rides. Think about your family and your trip as a whole. Paying out 15 bucks per person to ride a bunch of rides in Magic Kingdom without a wait or just Rise of the Resistance can seem steep. But if you know your group is going to be negatively affected by waiting in loads of long lines, that extra cost might save you a lot of headaches. Say you're traveling with a baby or someone with mobility concerns that isn't eligible for Disney's Disability Access Program. Even one or two long lines might be unbearable for them. What if you hop into an hour-long line just to have your kiddo go into meltdown mode 45 minutes in and you need to bail? I've been there. Spending that extra $15 can mean you've got more wiggle room and less worry about being stuck in a long queue when things go awry. Or think about if you're on a short trip where even a few long lines can eat up half your vacation. Even after the holiday season at Disney World, there are a few long weekends coming up that are going to be crowded, like President's Weekend, Martin Luther King Weekend. A long weekend trip might work out for your schedule, but crowds might make it so you spend nearly all of that weekend in lines. You may not need to buy Lightning Lane access for every day of your trip or for every ride, but this is one instance where paying a bit more money can have really high returns when it comes to less stress and less time spent standing in lines. Time is money in Disney World. Okay, so is it fun? financially worth it to wait in line. Disney World is expensive. I say it all the time. But if you have a little extra dough to spend during your trip and you have it in your budget to spend on Genie Plus or booking those paper ride attractions, you're giving yourself more wiggle room during your park days to chill out, eat, obviously very important, and experience some of the many attractions besides just rides. To determine if it's financially worth it for you and your family to pay to skip the lines, we're going to do a little bit of math here. We're going to use one of Disney World's most popular rides for this example, Rise of the Resistance in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Remember, Disney paused the use of the virtual queue system for Rise of the Resistance a few months ago. Previously, snagging a hard-to-get boarding group was the only way to experience this attraction, but currently guests can ride Rise either by waiting in the standby line or purchasing it through individual attraction selection. Since the introduction of the standby line, we've seen wait times of two hours and even longer. Here's where the math comes in. If you're a family of four, you could either spend two to three hours of your day waiting in line for Rise of the Resistance, or you could pay around $15 per person with individual attraction selection selection to skip the line, bringing your family to approximately $60 in total for this one ride. In this scenario, let's say you're visiting during an off-peak time, so your standard theme park tickets without park hopping abilities cost your party of four about $500 in total. 
Thinking about the time spent in line in comparison to the price you're paying for your park ticket that day, your three hours spent in line equate to approximately $125. If you're feeling confused, let's break it down a bit further. Typically, Hollywood Studios is open for about 12 hours per day, so you're paying $500 in total for one day. That's about $42 per hour for your party. Thus, three hours in line runs you around $125 worth of your day. Yes, you're going to be paying for those hours you might spend in line regardless, but by paying the extra $60 to skip the long line instead, you'll be able to fit more into that time frame. So it might feel like an extreme way of looking at it, but Disney isn't cheap, and if you're looking to get the very most bang for your buck, this might be one way to do so. Of course, this mathematical breakdown is different for each pay per ride option available on the day that you visit. Different rides have different prices, and these fluctuate based on when you visit, so be sure to consider the prices that are appropriate for your particular trip. Okay, so are the longest wait times worth it? Whether or not these long wait times are worth it comes down to you and your family's priorities. If you're all there to experience those top tier attractions, then you might be beyond happy to hang out in line for them. Or maybe you've been to Disney a million times and aren't interested in repeating rides you've experienced in the past if you have to wait in long lines. Instead, you're fine to dedicate a few hours to the newest attractions you haven't had the opportunity to try yet. These are all good options. When making this tough decision, it's also important to remember that despite having super long lines, some of these attractions are actually really short. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which boasts one of the longest wait times in Magic Kingdom, is barely three minutes long. You might be able to justify rides that are a little longer in length, like Flight of Passage at five minutes and Rise of the Resistance at 18 minutes. Okay, now we're at the part of this video where we're gonna talk about avoiding those wait times. If you and the family end up deciding that you'd rather spend your Disney World trip exploring the hotel's many offerings rather than queuing up for hours per day, there are a few different ways to reduce those wait times while still getting to enjoy and experience rides. In 2021, Disney introduced early theme park entry, which is a perk for those staying at hotels on Disney World property. Every day, each theme park opens to these resort guests 30 minutes prior to standard park opening. Having this 30 minute cushion before the park opens to everyone else will give you the time to hop in line for one or two of your favorite favorite attractions before the crowds come trickling in throughout the day. Guests of all Disney World Resort hotels and some other good neighbor hotels like the Disney Springs Resort Area Hotels, Shades of Green, and more have access to this perk. You can find the full list of eligible hotels on our website. And another perk for select resort hotel guests are extended evening theme park hours. These are available to people staying at Disney's Deluxe or Deluxe Villa Resorts, which are the highest tier and the most expensive hotels on property. Also included on this list of eligible resort hotels for the extended evening hours are the Swan and Dolphin hotels. Extended evening hours give you, well, extended hours in the evening. This nighttime perk started in October and gives guests a few extra hours in a designated park after it's closed to everyone else. This is only available on select dates and select parks, so you'll want to check the schedule to see if it fits into your plan before booking your trip or before deciding to stay at a particularly expensive hotel just to get this perk and then you don't get it because you're not there on days that they offer it. As I previously mentioned, you can pay $15 per day with Genie Plus to get access to lightning lanes to skip the standby lines, or book up to two paper ride selections with individual attraction selection. If you're still on the fence about whether or not these options are for you, check out all our other videos or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com to learn about all the details, the nuance, the shortcuts to using these new services. The Disney World pros also know the best time to get in line for which rides. We talk about this on the channel pretty often, but if you snag a place in line right at park opening, right before park close, or during the fireworks, you're more likely to score a reduced wait time. Also, with Disney Genie, which is free, you can even see which times during the day each ride is predicted to have the shortest wait times, so you're clued into the best times to go. Okay, now let's talk about actually waiting in line because it doesn't really matter if you get Disney Genie Plus or you get extended evening hours or whatever, you're still gonna spend some time in line at Disney World. So whether you're about to get in a line that's 30 minutes long or two hours long, there are a few things you're gonna wanna do before getting in line. Definitely make sure to make a bathroom pit stop beforehand, especially if you're traveling with kiddos. One of the most helpful features in the My Disney Experience app is the ability to see the nearest bathroom. So be sure to use that if you're unfamiliar with the lay of the land. You can do so by using the filter option of your park map and boom, bathrooms. The very last thing you want is to have to hop out of line after already waiting for a long time just because someone has to go to the restrooms. So you won't want to be uncomfortable holding it for that entire time. Speaking of discomfort, you'll also want to prevent yourself and others in your party from becoming hangry while waiting in line. So fuel up before getting there to curb those appetites and those tempers. And don't forget, you can always bring your own food to Disney World. So throw a couple granola bars in your backpack or make sure you've got snacks that suit everybody's 
dietary needs before you jump in line. All right, now you've taken preventative measures to make waiting in line a little more tolerable, but what about once you're actually in line? What do you do to help pass the time? If you're looking to Disneyfy your trip even more, you can download the Play Disney Parks app for free from your phone's app store to help pass the time in a more, you know, magical way. You'll find games, trivia, and interactive experiences to help fill the time while you wait. Another popular line activity is Heads Up, which is a guessing game app you can download that gets the whole family involved in an intense clue-giving session as one person tries to guess the thing they've been assigned. And hey, if you're worried about straying too far from Disney in this game, there are even Disney-themed categories to play with. If you're waiting in line by yourself or maybe just need some quiet time, you can download an ebook prior to your trip to read on your phone or listen to a podcast. And this is also a great time to charge your phone since we're using our phones basically constantly in Disney World these days, using the My Disney Experience app, taking photos, using Magic Mobile, etc., etc., etc. These batteries are definitely getting drained, so always have a handy portable charger or power bank in your park bag to make sure you don't end up phoneless. One of the most important things you can take into the queue with you is patience and realistic expectations. Yeah, there are many times where we do see actual wait times ending up shorter than posted wait times, as I mentioned earlier, but sometimes one hour really does mean one hour. So make sure everyone in your party knows just what they're signing up for before agreeing to get in line. If you're looking to make your line experience a little more interesting, you can opt to wait in line specifically for attractions with interactive or unique queues. In true Disney Imagineer fashion, basically every ride line is going to have impressive and dedicated details to reflect the ride story, but some do go above and beyond. The queue for Peter Pan's flight makes you feel like part of the magic with interactive illusions. Also, the lines for Flight of Passage is detailed and Haunted Mansion as well. And waiting in line for Dumbo the Flying Elephant is great if you're traveling with kids. There's a themed play area and part of the queue, and you can check in with a cast member before your kid goes to play to save your space in line. The cast member will give you a buzzer, think like waiting for a table at your local restaurant, which will notify you when it's your turn to ride, and your kid is entered entertained and not growing impatient standing in line because they're playing the whole time. Remember to head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash worth it waits to get all this info in an easy reference cheat sheet. We'll also sign you up for our free newsletter so you won't miss out on any breaking Disney World news that might affect your next trip. So these are just some of the ways to decide whether the longest wait times in Disney World are worth it for you. With new options for skipping the lines, there are lots of decisions to make pertaining to some of the most precious things when it comes to a Disney trip, time and money. So how long is too long for you? Are there any rides you would wait for no matter how long the line was? Be sure to share them in the comments below. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.